from New York City, it's the Wendy Williams Show. Topics. Come on. Big day here in New York for several reasons. First of all, the Rockefeller Center Christmas tree has arrived. Uh, it's getting blasted all over social media. Look at the limbs just dropping off. They're trying their best to struggle with this struggle, uh, struggle tree. It's got its own social media. But you know what? This is the perfect tree for 2020 if you think about it. It's not good, we're not good. It's been a terrible year. But look, in true New York fashion, the tree is clapping back. Look, the tree said, I just got here. Can you give me a minute to spruce up? No, I'm not camera ready the moment, no, I'm not camera ready the moment that I wake up. And in total New York fashion, I will have some work done. <laughs> and of course, the owl was caught in the tree. They, not all. You mean, ew. Mm -mm. I know the eyes are everything though, right? And, but, um, so the owl apparently got trapped in the tree when they wrapped it, because it came from upstate, you know? So they wrapped the tree, the owl was dehydrated. He's getting more attention than the New York City public schools, though. This is kind of embarrassing, you know? Anyway, the virtual tree lighting is being done December 2nd. In the meantime, the kids from the New York public schools are at home today. The parents are going stir crazy, poor parents. We don't know this work, what are we supposed to do? The kids wanna go out and see their friends and stuff, but I understand if we're still dealing with the pandemic, then they need to stay in the house and not make the teachers and the custodians and other people at the schools. It's just all terrible, horrible. And um, the Santas are all around, which you all could stay home this year. <laughs> so he's wearing a mask. Uh, mall visits for Santas look a little, little different this year. There's no sitting in laps. No, you see the plexiglass? I think this is the time that we're supposed to explain to our kids what um, <clears throat> the true meaning of Mr. Santa is. You know? And if they don't, then fine. If you're gonna take your kids to see Santa, first of all, probably be prepared for a line of social distancing. This kid right here is too big. And so was that one. I say no babies, cause they're not gonna remember anyway and you don't wanna get them sick bringing them out of the house. And no one over eight years old at eight, at eight, we all knew the true spirit of Mr. Christmas. Mm -hmm. Look at this in the window. The girls can't even sit up straight, they're all slumped over. <laughs> so, uh, the Masked Singer was on last night. Right. Now, you know, I'm back and forth with the Masked Singer. As a matter of fact, I didn't even see um, 
Pot but, Potomac. Uh, last, well, night. last night was Salt Lake City. I didn't even see that. I didn't see that either. What? I saw the inside of my eyelid. Exactly. It was on at 10 o'clock at night. No, I was asleep by 8.30. <laughs> Cause I had gone out to get some crepes. Mm-hmm. Turns out the place that I went is just a crepe stand mm. and nobody speaks English. So you just got a point. And then they didn't have cherries for the cherry crepes. They had all the other fruits. So I stopped at the grocery store. I bought my cherries, got back home, waited a moment, waited a moment. Then I didn't eat them until like seven o'clock at night. Luxuriated over them. They were warm with the butter. Mm, and then the hot cherries. And I was watching, you know, World News Tonight. Yeah, I, I like to see what's going on. And um, Inside Edition with Deborah Norville, you know, the usuals. And then I went to sleep and I woke up at 2.30 in the morning. I said, okay, well, I've now sliced out six. Hours. I consider that all a part of, you know, when a doctor says, how many hours a night do you sleep? <laughs> oh. <laughs> Excuse me. Anyway, so I miss this whole NBA thing. I don't know who Lonzo Ball is, but apparently an NBA player named Lonzo Ball was sent home last night on Mass Singer. And um, he was, I know, right? <laughs> All right. Well, he was there when I was there. Anyway, um, like I was telling you, we don't see each other. Uh, and he was what they call the whatchamacallit. That's, in the meantime, the Ball family was having a big night because at the same time he was being unmasked, his brother, LaMelo Ball, was uh, being picked as the third in the NBA draft. Wow. Yeah. And apparently the two boys' dad, Le LeVar, was uh, with the one who was picked for the NBA draft, along with the mom. Um, and LeVar told um, his sons, by the way, you'll never meet a good woman while playing basketball. Mm. Now this I did see on TV. I saw the actual footage. It, it, this is not my first time seeing it, but you enjoy, Shh, enjoy. You're never gonna meet a nice woman, especially in, in basketball. You're not gonna find nobody like I found your mom or, or my mom and dad. Cause here's the thing, if you're in this profession, which you got all this fame and notoriety, how are you gonna meet a good girl? You're not, because what you're gonna meet are in the restaurant where you eat, or you're gonna go to a club where you dance, or you're gonna meet her at the arena. So I hate to tell you, you're gonna meet a hoe. I happen to agree. I happen to agree. The only family that I know who survived hold'em while, while still playing is uh, the Curry family. Yeah. Aisha and Steph Curry. But I have a feeling, cause his dad played in the NBA, he probably put those seeds in young um, Steph's mind mm -hmm. when he was young, you know, like just no, you're never gonna meet a good girl. He happened to lock eyes with her and she's a good girl. And as we all know, the whole country will burn up if she finds out he's ever cheated on her. But I do agree with LeVar. Now, these guys, according to my Hot Topics team, are not stars alone. They're stars because their dad has a big mouth and he goes on a lot of the sports shows. He's not bad to look at. Um, mom is right there. Look at that family. A real dynasty. Oh. And LeVar says that the sons have already brought hoes home. Uh-huh. And the, and, the and the boys agree with their father. So let's hold them to that. Let's hold them accountable, boys. All right. Hopefully you'll find a good woman when you finish with the NBA. Mm -hmm. Welcome to Subway. I have to tell you something, it's tough being a, a ball player though, but that's, whether you play in the NBA, the soccer or whatever, just wait until you're finished to, you know, settle down and meet somebody, which is more than I can say for Robinson Cano. Uh-huh. Mm. Uh-huh. Mm. Yank, uh, the Mets here in New York. Did you hear about this? How are you gonna blow $24 million? Cause you wanna take steroids. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
because you think that diuretics are gonna wash the steroids through your system. <laughs> Stupid. And this is his second time doing it. He was caught one time. I don't understand how once you get caught, then you know you're a, you're like Alex. But like once you get caught, you're bound to do it again and think you can get away with it. The steroids made him run faster, heal from injuries faster, um, and oh, and recover from heavy weight lifting faster and able to lift more pounds faster. He was cheating. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So now they, they have him sitting out of the game, uh, the Mets, but the Mets also say, you know what? We got other guys who could do the same thing as him. But he was in line, you know, if he kept playing well to be um, a Hall of Famer. So he's lost that. Now I guess he's lost the respect of the Mets. I'm not, I'm not a Met, I'm a Yankee, but um, their hats fit better. <laughs> I'm just saying, they're, 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 their hats fit better there and they match more stuff. <laughs> I don't have that much orange, but you know what? And you lost out on $24 million. How does it feel? at 38 years old, to, and, and you're not exactly the best speaker. You're not like LeVar, where you can go on you know, shows and give commentary. How does that feel? I was mad for him. I don't know who's raised him, his mom, his dad, his grandmother, whatever. The whole family was counting on you. You had one job, Norman. Yep. One, just do one job. A mess. <laughs> okay, so Megan Trainer is um, six months pregnant. Congratulations. Oh. No, we know that. We've talked about it. We've talked about it. But the deal is, is that she won't have sex with her husband. She's not on bed rest, there's no problems, no complications. She says, all my pregnancy apps say it feels really good, you know, to have sex when you're pregnant. But all I can think about is there's a little boy in my belly. Here's the thing, men. When your girl is pregnant, she makes all the rules. You can get back to being the boss and you know, the king of the castle and stuff after the baby is delivered, but you know, those, those nine months, you deliver the ice cream, you sleep in the guest room. In the meantime, Megan's in her room probably, like I would be delighted, delighted, like nine months off, which I had nine months off, but I was on bed rest, you know, I had problems. But you order stuff from, you know, shopping channels. You're on the phone with your friends. You're Googling what's going on in the world. You're painting your nails. You're taking long baths. You don't have to be, you know, nudged in the middle of the night. <laughs> Lots of time for sex. I agree with her. Uh, he will follow her rules um, because we don't know who he is. I mean, he was in a bunch of, I guess if you have kids and they're into those warlock um, movies, spy kids. kids. Uh-huh. So she married the spy kid um, actor. His name is Daryl Sabara. Well, look, he's no longer a kid, so I guess he's not a part of that anymore. So he will follow in line because he's married now. He married up. Yeah. Megan Trainer. Mm -hmm. I'm really excited for Karen. Yeah. Yeah. You said that came on last night? No, Potomac is Sunday nights. Okay. Last night was Salt Lake City and Orange County. Right, 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 right. <laughs> so many. But Karen and I are gonna talk about the hat. Uh-huh, oh. Um, her truth about she and Ray in the marriage. Oh. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Um, well, that's enough. That's Beca because the hat is talking about all the girls in the shade. The grand dame, darling. <laughs> yes. Let's take a moment to talk about Bobby Brown Jr. The dearly departed son of Bobby Brown Sr. passed away yesterday, just before two o'clock in his Encino, California home. He was only 28 years old.
He was found dead in his home. Officials say that it didn't involve foul play. I feel really bad for Bobby. I, I really do want to hear the rest of this story. You know, how long was he there? Does he have a roommate? I, I can't show you a picture of the house. It costs too much. We have a budget here. <laughs> but I can tell you this. It was a house and with a, a crescent driveway. And it was really wide with those hand-laid stones. You know, hand-laid, I always tell you, is better than tar. So he was living nice. But try as we might, we couldn't find out what his career path was. Yeah, I don't really know. Rapper, I mean, singer, dancer? Maybe. Entertainment or something like that. Did he have a roommate? I don't know. Were there any cars in the driveway? <laughs> I didn't see any. I didn't either. Well, this is the second child that Bobby has lost. Remember, Bobby Chris passed away five years ago in the bathtub. And then eight years ago, it was Whitney. And then it seems like just the other day, but so long ago, Nick Gordon died, January 1st. Well, Bobby. Yeah, I feel for you, Bobby. Stay busy, though. You like to stay busy. I mean, you know, take care of what needs to be taken care of with your son. But you keep making those barbecue sauces and the cookbook. Yup, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. You know, um, Bobby Jr. And, and Bobby Chris were the only kids that they allowed to be on Being Bobby Brown, a legendary show to me. I mean, La Princia was there, but she was only um, like a feature, you know, a guest. Um, but mm -hmm, it was Bobby Chris and look at young Bobby. Dad, why you got me to here? <laughs> look at the uncle. Why are we here? And Bobby's like, I'm scared. Pops is good. And Whitney's like, my family. Oh, yeah. Well, a rapper is in trouble here in New York. Um, he pulled a dangerous stunt, which has him here on Hot Topics. <laughs> Clap if you know who Dupree God is. Sus? Negative. You don't know who? Negative. Uh, is there any music online? Maybe we could hear him in, in here privately during a commercial break? I'll look into it. What are you wearing on your feet? Another pair of J's with the, the red and the, the red and the black. Those are nice. I have these on. Come on, come on, Manny. Look, I'm featuring flowers, if you could see, ever so delicately on the front. Yeah, Air Max with flowers. Mmm, delicate. Mm. Anyway, okay. So last week, this miscreant. <laughs> there he is. And Norman says he's in love. <laughs> After finding him out, like all this stunt and everything he did, I find hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> um, and by the way, you have, to, you have to have him like you in order to be accepted into his social media. So Norman um, social media him last night and then left his name. Did you say the Wendy show and everything? Yeah, it, it says it on my profile. And so how long did it I take? To get Within the minute. It was like, <laughs> accepted. <laughs> so I don't like to call him God. Right, exactly. You know, Dupree. right. Dupree, uh, G-O-D, was filming a music video. So he jumped on the ice cream truck, truck oh and then jumped onto a bus with the gun in his hand, 25 people in the bus. This is the B26 in Brooklyn, okay? The bus driver got out of the bus like, uh-uh, nope, nope, <laughs> and ran down the street like, I'm not dying tonight. Look, he did a full, <laughs> he did a full music video. Um, the cops didn't catch him he turned himself in to the police. Oh, well, no, this makes it even bigger. You turn yourself into the cops, you, you're, you, you, know, you go to a few desk warrants, you get out, now you have a little record. Some of the girls that um, LaVar's 
father uh-huh, calls yeah, out, uh-huh, yeah. will be all on you. <laughs> the H word, they'll be all on you. It's gonna be a good Thanksgiving. You know, cause even if they make you do community service, you'll be outside with your um, stuff on. Like, yup, I'm Duke. Dupree. I'm Duke. So he was charged with reckless endangerment and he said he did it for the art and the Wu-Tang Clan. Uh, where did that come from? I don't know. All right, Dupree. Oh, by the way, he was seen with his friends playing with the fl- flamethrower. Look at this, look at this. And where are the cops? Nowhere, overworked, on the other side of the city, or scared. Like if I was a cop, I'd be like, mm-mm, I'm not going over there. Plus he made it on the cover of the New York Post. Yes! Now, this crime happened yesterday, and the Post spun out this cover. While kids need to be educated, there are people starving in the streets. We still don't have an accurate count of what is going on, when we'll be going back to school, when houses of worship will be open, or what we're gonna eat for Thanksgiving. Dupree is occupying the cover. His, his lawyer says, no laws, uh, there's no law here against flame throwing here in New York. Well, first of all, do we have to make a law for that? <laughs> Second of all, that needs to be added to the books right away. Eric Adams, get on it. You're running for mayor, get on it. No flame throwers. And what do you use them for anyway? Oh, he could stand and burn down that Rockefeller Christmas tree. <laughs> 